Hello and welcome back to Football Manager 2019 at our new club of Burton Albion in League One. There is a very, very strange story about what's gone on and why we're now at Burton Albion on the 14th of August 2020. A lot of things have happened. If you didn't see the last episode, you would not be aware that we've been fired from Nottingham Forest. You wouldn't be surprised, but you wouldn't be aware of it. So yes, we did get fired from Nottingham Forest just before Christmas. And the replacement for us was a certain Nigel Clough who was the Burton Albion manager. So he left Burton Albion to go to Nottingham Forest. Burton Albion then offered me a job. And for some reason, I said, I'll take it at the end of the year. So there was, this was in January, by the way. I could have taken the job in January. This was at the, I said, I'll take the job at the start of the new season for some reason. What happened after Nigel Clough left is this. Burton Albion got to the playoff final. Um, they did lose. I did sit there and watch the match and thought, wow, what have I got myself into? But they did lose 4-0 to Rotherham. But they got to a playoff final. So I'm almost very, very close to actually taking over a team that got promoted. Um, unfortunately, like you can see here, we didn't get promoted. We are still in League One. So we now have quite a big task because the board want us to get playoffs once again. And I'm not very good at getting wins, let alone playoffs. We might not have any matches in this episode. I will tell you that now, there's a lot of stuff to go through, a lot, a lot of transfer business has taken place, and because it's a new team, I kind of want to give you a little bit of a rundown of some of the players that we've got, because if I just go through the players we've signed, you're not going to see some of the people who are already here, who I need to actually make use of. First thing I'm going to show you is the list of players that were released at the end of the season, so just before I, uh, I actually joined the club. Christopher Samba was here, he's retired. A guy called Marcus Harness, Marcus Dinaga. Uh, Jack Broomfield, or Jack Bromfield, sorry, and David Templeton have all left the club. We we were decimated. At the end of the season, a lot of our players left. Also, a number of first-team players left, some for some reasonable sums of money. Two players have left the club on loan. Jake Buxton is the first one. He's gone on loan to Northampton. He's getting paid too much money, so Northampton are paying all of that. He's 35 years old. He was never actually going to play for us. Another player out on loan is 24-year-old left-back Joe Maguire. He's gone to Blackpool again. Another player who I wasn't actually going to use until I realised all my left-backs were injured. That's a completely different story. Another player to leave is Stephen Quinn, former Reading, mid Reading and Hull midfielder and Northern, Northern Republic of Ireland international, has signed for Derry City for about £40,000. I'm kind of glad to get him off the books. He's decent. like He's not a terrible footballer, but at 34 years old, he was also getting paid way too much money. Our one and only decent goalkeeper, Dimitar Evtimov, uh, formerly of Nottingham Forest. Oh, great. Um, <laughs> that's a good sign. Um, yes, he's left. He's gone to Leicester. They made an offer for him that we couldn't refuse because he had a minimum fee release. So he's gone, and I needed to buy a new goalkeeper. So I bought about six. Chris Guthrie is another player to leave. He was getting paid way too much money for someone who wasn't actually going to play for us. So he's gone to Plymouth for about £110,000. And one that I'm quite disappointed with is Reese Hutchinson. He has left. He's gone to Swansea. 20-year-old English left-back. Probably one of our better players. He's gone for one and a half million pounds. So I think we've got a decent amount of money for him. He's actually helped basically fund restructuring and rebuilding the squad. A total of 18 players have joined the club. Quite a lot of them are on free transfers. Quite a lot of them are on loans. I bought one person. Um, so I'm going to fly through these very quickly. First up, Callum Watts, English central midfielder, has joined on a free transfer after being released from Southampton. A player that I didn't actually sign, Arash Amadi, English left-back, has signed on a free transfer from Norwich. 22-year-old English central midfielder, Regan Booty, has signed on loan from Huddersfield for the season. He is a very good signing for this level of football, I think. 18-year-old right-sided winger Stephen Hunt has signed on loan from Southampton. He is obviously, as you can tell, a new gen. He is going to be one of our key players for this season as well. 21-year-old Welsh defender Mitch Clark has signed on loan from Aston Villa. He's, he's come in because he's very versatile. Realistically, he's probably a midfielder. We're going to utilise him as anywhere along the back four. Manchester United central defender Luca Ercolani has signed he is Italian, but he is also part English, so he's allowed to play for us. Three-star current ability, five-star potential. He's going to be one of the first names on the team sheet. I made a mistake with this one. Alan Chapchet, French central defender on loan from Southampton, can't play because he doesn't have a work permit because he's not getting paid enough money. Great. Same thing with Christoph Clara. Luckily, both Christoph Clara and Alan Chapchet, they're basically... I'm not paying any of their wages, so... I'm not losing money for them being here. Annoyingly, 
I can't terminate the loan. I'd rather just terminate the loan deal and send them back, but I'm not allowed to do that. 18-year-old English goalkeeper Cameron Plain has signed formally of Bournemouth. He has come in on a free transfer. He is going to sit in the under-18s for a few years. On loan from Fulham is 21-year-old English goalkeeper Tay Ashby Hammond. I got him in thinking he'd be our number one goalkeeper, but we have signed someone who is as good, if not better, than uh, Ashby Hammond. So, I mean, Ashby Hammond's played once already. Our other goalkeeper's probably our number one. 18-year-old Scottish central defender signed from Tottenham is Lewis Binks. Free transfer. He is actually not terrible. He'll probably get a lot more games like later on in the save, I think. Probably the first season. Assuming I stay longer than a season, might be a, might be a bit of a struggle for him. Another central defender to join is 22-year-old Josh Pask, formerly of West Ham. I had him for uh, Blackburn in last year's save, I believe. He looks quite good, but he doesn't quite break into my first team yet. I might need to retrain him up, potentially, as uh, one of these, a deep-line playmaker or a Segundo Volante, possibly. 23-year-old Ghanaian striker Daniel Agui has also signed on a free transfer. He's also part English, so that is good news for us. He looks quite good, but he can't finish. But at this level of football, I think he might be okay. Former Arsenal youth player Regan Charles Cook has also signed on a free transfer, a Jamaican international, but also has English. He's got an English passport. I think he's actually probably born in England. Um, he's three-star current ability, four-star potential. He's going to be a very useful player for us as he can play in any one of those front three positions. Also, he can kind of play as a deep-lying forward. So he is going to be one of the more important new signings. And yes, he was born in London. On a free transfer, 18-year-old central midfielder Che Cooper has signed formally of Tottenham, much like Lewis Binks. He is probably not going to play a huge amount of football for us. I'm actually going to look at loaning him out to try and get him some first-team football. He's got the potential there, so he might actually be half-decent in a year or so's time. Our number one goalkeeper is 33-year-old Josh Lillis. He's come in on a free transfer. He was released from Rochdale after 11 years at the club. He is... I say 11 years. Hold on, he was... What? How does that work? Okay, so he went on loan there a couple of times and signed eventually. So yeah, Josh Lillis is going to be our number one goalkeeper. He's only got two-star current ability, two-star potential, but his age of 33 years old means he does have the experience. 365 games in total in his entire career. He will be our number one, like I said. Ashby Hammond will probably come in occasionally every now and then when I think, you know what, Lillis, he could do a rest because he's an old man. He's actually, he's younger than me, isn't he? He's younger than me by, by over a year. Another signing who is a free transfer is Jack Kearsey, formerly of Everton, 21 years old as a central midfielder, but can also play as a defensive or an attacking midfielder as well. He's signed on a free transfer. Like I've mentioned, he's probably going to go out on loan somewhere because someone's bidding for him. I want to say Forest Green. I don't think it is Forest Green. Kidderminster and Aldershot. It's definitely not Forest Green. But again, he's got a bit of potential. I don't think he's ever really going to make it, but if we can sell him on, he might be okay. And finally, the only player that we paid any money for, Kagosi Nthele. Maybe, I have no idea, you're definitely going to have to change your name. He's got one cap for South Africa back in 2013. We spent £37,000 on this man from Rochdale, formerly of Peterborough, played a little bit for Stevenage as well. He's only got two-star current ability, but I mean, he's, he's a natural attacking fullback, which is one of the things that I was looking for. Like I said earlier, I didn't have any left-backs anyway, so he's come in. He's probably going to play more football than he actually deserves, but I've also paid £37,000 for him, so I feel like I need to probably justify that. So that is all the transfer business so far. The window has closed because we are in August. Um, there is a couple more transfers that are going to go through, and it is going to be these two. I say they're going to go through. I hope they're going to go through. First up, 31-year-old English winger Lucas Atkins. He's on £5,500 a week. It's hopefully going to be off to Aberdeen. He is one of our better players, but getting paid that much money is way too much money for me. He's come off the bench a couple of times, started in the Carabao Cup as well. He's been here for a very long time, so I suspect people might get annoyed if I sell him. And the other one is Liam Boyce, who is a 29-year-old Northern Irish striker, signed from Ross County. A few years ago, only a year ago in real life by the looks of it, but again, he's on a hell of a lot of money, £5,750 a week. He is a three-star current and three-star potential ability. He is looking like he's off to, if it will tell me, Dinamo Bucharest. I don't understand that one, but sure, for a million pounds, I will take that. I was trying to get 1.4 for him. A million pounds will do. 
so tactics wise this is what I'm going to go with. If, ignore the players, that's what we played in the Carabao Cup, so that's actually kind of a second string lineup. But this is what I'm looking at playing. This is the same formation that I started to play with Nottingham Forest at the end of my tenure there. So we're going to be playing with the two deep lying midfielders, three attacking midfielders with the one striker as well. I've intentionally bought players to fill the roles needed. So if we just do ask the assistant to pick, I know we don't have a game today, you'll see that uh okay no let give me a minute this isn't the usual starting lineup but i just wanted to show you that i've kind of defensively we are very kind of well-rounded everyone's pretty good the midfield roles getting secundo Valantes at this level of football is practically impossible so getting hold of regan booty who also can be a deep line playmaker if we go there he can also play as that deep line playmaker role and the secundo Valante. so he's actually a like I said, he's a really good signing for this level of football, particularly for the formation I want to play. Jamie Allen is a natural deep-lying playmaker in central midfield. As you go further back, not so great, but hopefully he can learn it. He's still only 25. Stephen Hunt, the youngster on loan from Southampton, can fill in as an inside forward on the right-hand side. Regan Charles Cook, he's kind of inside forward on the left, maybe the attacking midfielder in the middle. Joe Sabara, I've been, I'm have i not sure whether I should play him as this advanced midfielder here or as a deep-lying forward. I've played him as a deep-lying forward once. You can see he scored three goals this season. They might have all been in one game. So Joe Sabara, or Sbarra, not sure. Um, he's quite good. I like him. But we do also have a lot of options, as you can see here. Our first team is pretty stacked. Um, there's a lot of defenders on here. Um, we've also got some, like, like I said, let's, if we just do that, let's stick in. Nthele, he's also pretty good there. Erkelani, let's take Erkelani out and put Lewis Binks in. Lewis Binks, he's pretty good as well. So I think we've got a decent amount of depth in the team. Some of the more important players that I should probably bring your attention to who haven't actually just joined the club. Carl McFadzine is a 33-year-old central defender. He, Yes, he's getting on a bit, but he's still one of our best players. Really good. Been here for quite a while as well, since 2016. So he... Like, he's getting paid probably too much money for a 32-year-old, or 33-year-old, sorry, but he's still pretty good. He thinks we're lacking depth in midfield, which he's probably right. Tom Aldred is another player. He's actually signed from Motherwell in the game, by the looks of it. He's 29 years old, Scottish central defender, three-star current and three-star potential ability. Decent-looking player. So far, has yet to play for me because Luca Ercolani and McFadzine have been our two central defenders. A player who's probably going to be our first choice left back is Damien McCrory. He un unfortunately hasn't actually played a game for us yet due to being injured when I joined the club. He's still injured for another 10 days, but he is a two and a half star current and two and a half star potential ability. 30 year old Irish footballer, no international caps unfortunately, seems reasonably well rounded. Much like John Brayford, who's a 32-year-old English right-back. He's three-star current and three-star potential ability. Formerly, I want to say from MK Dons. I don't think he is. It's Derby. Derby's where he spent the majority of his career. Um, and also previously at Burton. There you go. Didn't know that. Uh, John Brayford, very good, very useful. Got an assist to his name already so far this season. And scored a goal in the Carabao Cup. The final player that I'm going to show you is Marvin Sordell, the 29-year-old English striker with 14 caps. And four goals for the England under-21 side. He's a relegation specialist. Been relegated with Bolton, Burnley, Colchester and Burton Albion. So let's hope he doesn't keep that run going. Never been promoted. Let's see if we can change that. Three-star current, three-star potential ability. Probably going to be our number one or number two striker. Depending on what, uh, whether I go with Sabara up front or as that attacker midfielder. So that is the team. Yes, there are some other players that I haven't actually shown you. Hold on. Ben Fox, he seems quite good. Why have I not played Ben Fox? Because he doesn't really fit my system. Right, Benjamin Fox, are you... Can you be retrained? Okay, you are being retrained as that deep line playmaker. That's fine. So yeah, Ben Fox seemed quite good as well. Um, we do have, if we go to under-18s, I know this is going to be quite a long, rambly episode. Um, we've got Binks, who I've dropped into the under-18s. Cooper, Tom Hewlett. I, is he one of ours? He is one of ours. He's got a lot of potential as well. He might actually get pushed up into the first team soon. So we do have some youth prospects as well. Uh, this guy, Fidel O'Rourke, is going to be signing. Remy Savage and Will Greenidge will also be signing, hopefully, in the coming days. Let's have a look at finances, shall we? We're over our wage budget and we've got no transfer budget. But with um, Atkins and the other guy, Byrne, Boyce, Byrne, Boyce, one of them, the, the, the striker, where is he? Boyce, that's the one. With those two players leaving, that is hopefully going to fix our finances a little bit more. 
So now we've kind of had the whole introduction out of the way, I did play a number of games. I've actually played four games, three in the league, one in the Carabao Cup. And as you can see, after the three league games, we are currently sat second place in the table. And that's because we've done very well. We opened our season up against Swindon Town at the Pirelli Stadium. We won 1-0, Keshi Anderson with an own goal. However, we were much, much better. 21 shots, 10 shots on target, could not convert it. Sbarra, who was our striker in that on that day, gets a 6.3 up front. Hopefully, he starts to get a little bit more clinical, and you'll see that he did. Because against Luton Town, we won 5-3, and Joe Sparrow gets himself a hat-trick. Jamie Allen also scores a goal. Regan Booty scores a goal. Three minutes after, he scored a goal for Luton Town. Jack Stacey and Danny Hilton pull two goals back for Luton. They did make it 4-3 at one point, which got me a little bit panicky. Um, it was a very good performance. Defensively, not the best. Uh, Mitch Clark, who was playing as a left-back, who's not a left-back, basically took the fault for the majority of their goals. Our first dropped points of the season were up against Southend. It was a nil-nil draw. Stephen Hunt going off injured in the first half is the only real bit of action to talk about. We were the better side, 13 shots to their six. Unfortunately, couldn't seem to score a goal. And then finally, in the Carabao Cup in the first round, we beat Rochdale 3-1. Jamie Allen, Scott Fraser and John Brayford with the goals for us. Jacob Brown with the goal for them. It was quite an easy game. Um, an easy? It wasn't an easy game. It was quite an even game. That's better. Uh, but we did dominate the possession. Um, Shots-wise, wasn't too great. But we did perform well enough to actually pick up the victory to set up a third round tie, a third round, second round tie against Gillingham. League One Gillingham is who we've got. So uh, that should be, it should be a winnable game because in theory, we're one of the better teams in League One. Speaking of League One... Um, this is the season preview, although because we're a few days in, I guess it's slightly changed a bit. We are predicted to finish 7th. The board want us to get a playoff spot, which I think is possible. Last season they finished 6th, um, obviously getting into the playoffs, getting to the playoff final and losing to Rotherham. So I think we can possibly do the same thing again. Sunderland, QPR, Bolton, Wigan, Bradford, Scunthorpe. There's some big teams in that league. Also, if you go further down, I think... I'd arguably Peter are a big team, MK Dons are a big team. Um, yeah, I'm a little bit concerned. I, I'm quite concerned that we're not going to do that well, although we have started reasonably well. We are going to play one game in this episode. If it's going to be very long, I apologise, but we're going to play against Scunthorpe, who find themselves currently 19th place in the table. Should be a victory for us, but we shall see. Well, before the Scunthorpe game can take place, Lucas Atkins has left. He has gone to Aberdeen. £700,000 goes into our bank account, which means our bank account now will look a lot healthier. We've got our, we're under our wage budget as well. Um, one thing that I didn't mention, um, it's confusing to me because basically I just asked um, the director, not the director of football, the chairman to hire me a director of football, and he went and hired the current Fulham manager, uh, Slavisa Djokanovic. I, I don't know... I don't know how or why he managed to do that also. I don't know why he's willing to drop down to this level when he was a Premier League manager. He's now a League One director of football. Um, Djokanovic has then gone nuts and hired a whole load of Serbians. This is my head of youth development, Dragan Mladenovic, who's actually very good, formerly of Red Star. That is a decent, that's a very good head of youth development, actually. He's also gone and hired Vladan Grzic, who's actually a Bosnian, as a scout. Andrea Milutinovic, who is a physio, who's also Serbian, formerly of Partizan. And that actually looks like it. No, it isn't. There you go. There's a final one. Steven Modsilovic, who is a Serbian 53-year-old manager of our under-18s. So, yeah, we're slowly turning Burton Albion into a team filled with uh, Serbian scouts and coaches and physios and things, which I'm actually okay with because... There's a lot of good uh, good footballers in Serbia, and if that helps us manage to pick them up, great. I am a bit concerned because of obviously Brexit means that we have to pay them £8,000 a week, which we can't afford. Liam Boyce has also left the club for that one point, uh, yeah, was it 1.1 or just 1, 1 million pounds, uh, potentially rising to 1.4. See, I did get my 1.4 in the end. He's made his way over to Romania, which is a very, very strange signing. Time for the Scunthorpe game then. If we can get a victory today, there is the potential that we could move to the top of the table. But that will obviously involve Sunderland actually not beating Bradford City, who are down in 14th place. 
Scunthorpe, who are 19th, they are 19th, yet to pick up a victory so far this season, so it is the ideal time for them to do it against high-flying Burton Albion, isn't it? The starting lineup that we are going to go for then. In goal will be the old man Josh Lillis, John Brayford, Carl McFadzine, Luca Ercolani and Kagosi Nthele will be the back four. Jamie Allen and Regan Booty will be the two deep lying midfielders. Regan Booty is going to be that Segundo Volante because he's actually half decent as one of those. Inside forward on the right will be Stephen Hunt on loan from Southampton. Regan Charles Cook will be the inside forward on the left. Joe Zabara will be the attacking midfielder just behind the deep lying forward of Marvin Sordell. I do like the look of this team. It's it's looking like I've, I've kind of built the team that I want. Admittedly, some of the players aren't ideal. Jamie Allen's good, but I'd rather have someone who's actually natural as that deep line playmaker, because I imagine they're quite important when it comes to this tactic. 4-4-2 then for Scunthorpe. And uh, up front they do have Ched Evans. Is he any good? He's quite good. Uh, they recommend I don't sign him, but he's still actually quite good at football. He's probably... Just as good as Marvin Sordell. I've just realised I need to change my jacket. I'm currently wearing a red jacket, where formerly of Southampton and Nottingham Forest. I need to change that to a lovely yellow one now to match Burton Albion's colours. What a great ball that is in the first highlight. Hunt crosses in Marvin Sordell. Is this actually a highlight? 15 seconds in. Allen across to Nthele. Charles Cook on the left-hand side back to Nthele. Joe, Joe Allen? Is it? It's Jamie Allen. I knew it was a J Allen. Okay, it's not actually a highlight. 24 minutes in, Ched Evans goes for goal, Josh Lillis makes a great save, but it comes straight back out to Craig Sibbald. We are 1-0 down, that is Scunthorpe's first effort on goal, technically they've had two shots, it's all come in that one highlight, we've been all over them, and we've got nothing to show for it and we're 1-0 down. Allen with a free kick towards Nthele at the back and Stephen Hunt is there. Kagosi Nthele with the assist. The youngster Stephen Hunt makes his first ever goal for Burton Albion on loan from Southampton. We are back into this game. Hopefully we've moved back up to second place as well. Half time then. It is one all and it is unfortunate that it is one all because Sconthorpe have done absolutely nothing apart from score that one goal. I'm going to just get the assistant Steve Thompson to do stuff. Um... Don't think we really need to change anything. Brayford's not playing too well, but I don't really... I mean, I could p bring Mitch Clark on as a right-back. I'm going to bring Mitch Clark on as a right-back. Probably a risk taking off one of your most experienced players and your captain at half-time, but he's on a 6.3, and I suspect he's a little bit annoyed that I've sold most of the good players. Stephen Hunt, with a free kick, goes for goal and dinks the top of the crossbar. Just uh, under an hour in... We are still all over them, but we're not actually getting that second goal that we need to take the lead. I'm going to encourage them. Clark with a throw. Sabara to Jamie Allen. Runs forward across to Regan Booty. Goes for goal. He's hit the bar. Charles Cook has forced a wonderful save out of David O'Leary. It's probably not David O'Leary. We've got a corner. Corner for Jamie Allen to take. Plenty of players in the box. Sabara's one of them. It's headed across goal and O'Leary easily claims the ball. We've hit the post a lot in this game. Throw on for Nthele, Sbarra to Charles Cook. Nthele gets it back. Regan Booty runs in towards goal, puts it into the bottom corner and Regan Booty gets his second goal of the season, puts us in front against Scunthorpe. We are playing well. I think we genuinely have a very good team here. I'm going to do a sub. I'm going to bring off Marvin Sordell for Daniel Aggie. Um, I think Aggie probably needs a bit of first team football because so far he's not really done anything. Throw on for Nthele again. Sbarra. Into Aggie, get tackled, but Hunt is there, and Stephen Hunt has made it 3-1. His second goal of the game, his second of the season. We are up into second place. Morris with a free kick for Scunthorpe. It's gone all the way over. Ojo's going to keep it in play, plays it way, way far back. McArdle in the area, across to Ojo again, crosses in. McFadzine clears. Sparra upfield to Aggie, controls it. The Ghanaian on the left-hand side needs some support, tries to play it into the middle, doesn't find anyone. Aggie heads it forward and doesn't chase it down. Ojo now runs forward, across to Sears on the right-hand side, crosses in. Josh Lillis saves it. Why? It was going wide. He's given away a corner instead. We've got 12 minutes to play. Morris's corner comes in towards the penalty spot. Ojo's header is straight at Lillis and Lillis makes a good save. Morris with a free kick. Seven minutes to play. Mercado was there and that has hit the bar. I'm going to do a sub in the right near the end. Who do we do? Charles Cook? We've done Charles Cook for Fraser. I was going to move people about but no, Fraser actually can play as a winger. Into injury time, and it's not looking like anything is going to happen, so this is going to be a good 3-1 victory away from home against Scunthorpe. And I think you've seen 
that this team could be good. If we can start converting some more of these chances, we could have been, we could have won that game 5-1 easily. We could have won it 5-0. Assistant manager's done a decent team talk. Oh, look at some of these numbers. Look at Regan Booty and uh, Jamie Allen. 8.3 and an 8.8. An 8.6 from Kogosian Thele as well. A 7.2 from Josh Lillis in goal. I think that was a very good performance. That performance then has meant that we do stay in second place. Hot on the heels of Sunderland, who are top of the table. Fleetwood in third joint on points of us, but with two goals less. So far, so good. We've started very well as Burton Albion. Hopefully we can keep this going. That is going to do it then for this episode. Sorry if it was very rambly and very talky. We did get a game in there. We did win 3-1. So I think all in all, it's been a very successful first episode as manager of Burton Albion. Next episode, we are going to go to maybe Oldham and Bristol Rovers with a Bolton uh, Checker Trade Trophy sandwich in the middle. That might be where we're going to go. I don't really care too much about the Checker Trade Trophy. Um, or maybe I do. I don't know. Thank you very much for watching this episode. If you did enjoy, if you wouldn't mind leaving a like, if you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. And I will see you tomorrow for part two of our journey with Burton Albion. Mm -hmm.